Hello there, it's been a while. Lately, we've been reading quite some stories with strong main leads that dominate the game from the start, right? This time, we're introducing you to a completely different story. The Regressor Instruction Manual is a thriving story not about the aggressor, but about his tactician. That's right, our main character was not the hero, but a weak, calculative ass, whose stats started off as the worst of all players, Lee Kyung. Let's play close attention and see how Lee Kyung was able to thrive with such trashy stats and collect a yandere girl, a silly tanker, and an accomplished swordsman as his comrade. And don't forget to smash that like button, share and subscribe to support us, as well as let us know what you think about this story in the comments section. For now, let's start our story. Ear-piercing screams startled Lee Kyung awake. In shock, he found himself standing in a crowd inside a crystal clear pyramid. Just a minute ago, Lee Kyung was having dinner at home when he received a game invitation on the phone. Thinking that this was just a normal game like any other, he lightly accepted it. When everyone was confused, a beautiful goddess appeared. She kindly greeted them and announced that they had been chosen to be the heroes to save the dying continent. But as she said, only a small number of survivors will make it to the real continent. The people were all in disbelief, but they soon knew their reality when she introduced them to the status window. It was as if they were in a virtual reality game. Lee Kyung also opened his status window and found himself with heroic rank luck and intelligence. And his special trait was being able to see all players' status pages. Quickly scanning through the other's windows, Lee Kyung, our main lead, found that his stats were the worst of all. The system's overall assessment told him that he should have given up already, but that would end our story right away. Of course, Lee Kyung was not discouraged at all. He calmly picked up a spear when the goblins were breaking in. Kyung promptly ran into a big guy, Park Dyuk Gu, who has flying stats regarding his physical strength. Kyung used his spear to fight off a goblin when it was trying to attack him. The two then ran together away. Dyuk Gu protected Kyung with his shield. Kyung smirked, knowing that he had got himself a decent meat shield. When Kyung and Dyuk Gu were about to escape through a door, they heard a man's begging. He was surrounded by a bunch of goblins. They stopped, both hesitated, but Kyung ran back and picked up the stocks next to the man. They got away. When the two were taking a rest, a huge demon approached them. However, it did not attack them at all. Seeing that this demon has very bad eyesight through its status window, Kyung quickly decided to finish it. In Dyuk Gu's admiration, he promptly slayed the demon. Kyung encouraged Dyuk Gu and used the demon skin to give him some protection. He easily gained Dyuk Gu's loyalty. Suddenly, a girl rushed over with not one, but a bunch of huge demons following her. Kyung dragged Dyuk Gu away, but he was stunned to stop when seeing that the girl possessed legendary magic power. Kyung quickly guided Dyuk Gu to stop and fight to save the girl. The two were fighting fiercely when a demon approached Kyung from behind. In the nick of time, a powerful sword slash saved Kyung. It was a handsome man that came and slayed all of the demons in a single move. Kyung activated Mind's eyes and saw the man's stats, which, as expected, were flawless with all heroic and legendary numbers. But the thing that caught Kyung's attention was his title, Regressor of Atlantis. This man was not a first-time player, but a veteran who had got back in time. He quickly decided to keep a friendly attitude. They had a friendly discussion and Kim Hyun Sung invited the two to join his survivor camp. Then Hung Sung noticed John Hyun hiding behind the rock. He showed an unnatural courtesy towards Hyun, which scared the girl. As Kyung was also the one to save her life, Hyun seemed to be depending on him. Hyun Sung's strange attitude gave it away to Kyung that he wanted Hyun to be on his side. This meant that Hyun must be a powerful magician in the future, and a strategist Kyung was. He decided to stay on good terms with Hyun Sung and her. The group arrived at a large, bright, and sunny survivor camp led by Kim Hun Sung. While admiring the landscape, Dyuk Gu asked how Hun Sung found this place. Hun Sung claimed it was by accident, but Kyung suspected he knew of the location beforehand. A young girl with short hair suddenly appeared and greeted them charmingly. Kyun Sung used his mind's eye to read her stats and discovered that, despite looking young, she was actually 29. Her overall stats were as bad as his. Offensively, the system mocked him by suggesting that they were a deadly pair together, as soulmates. 
Dokgu introduced everyone to the girl, but when Jun Haiyan's name was mentioned, the girl's attitude changed to become more cautious and wary. She quickly adjusted her demeanor and promoted Dokgu as a powerful tank capable of defeating all monsters to save Kyung and Haiyan. Looking at her smirk, Kyung realized that the girl in black and him were the same type of person. The next day, he directly asked Hyunsung about how the camp was being maintained, pointing out the irrationality of having so many people with limited food. To Hyunsung's surprise, Kyung offered to contribute to the camp in exchange for partaking. Kyung presented to Hyunsung his impressive analytical mindset. He could already tell that Hyunsung's plan was to survive, not to fight. Hyunsung was convinced. The two shook hands and thus confirmed their companion relationship. The next day, Kyung and Hunsung and Dokgu went on hunting for food. Hyunsung's skillful swordsmanship deeply satisfied Kyung, but it also caused Dokgu to feel inferior to him, as Dokgu thought that he was useless. Kyung once again encouraged Dokgu, saying that without such a tank like him, it would be much harder to get out. They were talking about how Hyunsung's class helped increase his sword skill when Kyung got his first classes. He was offered to choose from warrior, archer, magician, and commander, while Kyung was torn between becoming an archer and a commander. Dokgu was super big on Kyung as his commander, but Hyunsung said the team would benefit more from an archer. The two had a childish quarrel. Kyung let them aside and clicked to choose his class. And it was, let's just see what happens in the next chapter. Hyunsung and Dokgu were both excited to see what class Kyung would choose, whether it was commander or archer. But the class Kyung finally chose out of expectation was magician. Dokgu also decided to become a shield warrior instead of a priest because he listened to the other's recommendations. Meanwhile, the situation at the survivor camp was very bad because everyone was starving. Even having a piece of bread to eat was already good enough. Hyunsung gave the food to Jahai and asked her to distribute it to everyone. Kyung decided not to share the food because, as he had said, he was not a volunteer. People here should at least grab a sword, not just staying here begging for food. Kyung also realized that Lee Ji Hae was an ambitious person. If Hyun Sung was not in the camp, she would become the ruler and in charge of all operational management. Realizing that Haiyan, the little girl that he saved in the dungeon a couple of days ago, was being treated badly at camp, Kyung asked Yeok Go to bring her food and keep an eye on her. However, just as Duck Goo was bringing food, another guy was also approaching her and gave some bread. Kyung soon understood the man's attention, so he made Duck Go come up. There, Hyun was really confused by the man's sudden help, but a naive girl she was. She took the bread and had a bite. The man then revealed his ugly intent. He held Hyun's wrist forcefully. Hyun, of course, was frightened, but Duck Go came to the rescue. He threatened the man to let go and removed his hand. The man immediately raised a fuss. He sniveled like a loser. The crowd soon noticed the messy situation and they criticized Duck Goo for being violent. He was extremely angry toward the man and tried to attack him, but Hyun stopped him. Jihei, the two-faced girl, came to resolve the dispute, but she was on the man's side. The man explained himself, hiding the fact that he was trying to harass Hyun. People started talking shit about Hyun and forced her to speak for herself. However, Hyun was mentally weak and was regularly mistreated by others. She cried and couldn't explain anything. Jahai made use of that. He criticized Hyun for being childish and Duck Go for being violent. She even forced Hyun to bow down and apologize to the man. The timing was perfect. Kyung stepped out and the only thing he cared about was that Jung Hyun was in trouble. He asked a few twisted questions to put Ji Hai in a difficult situation and added that Hyun Sung would probably be very disappointed if he were here. Kyung asserted that Hyun was innocent and advised people not to get caught up in what everyone else was saying. Everyone turned around and felt that Kyung's words were reasonable and said that Ji Hai may have gone too far. At the same time, Kyung implicitly asserted to Ji Hai that he was the king of this camp now. Afterwards, Kyung met Hyun and asked what had happened. Since she was crying and talking at the same time, whatever she said was extremely difficult to understand. Kyung didn't understand much, but what was important now was empathy. Hyun was extremely grateful because from the first meeting, Kyung had always helped her and wanted to know the reason behind it. Of course, Kyung had to lie a lot to win her sympathy. In that atmosphere of empathy and mutual understanding, Hyun also talked to her about her family, and the two of them became more comfortable talking to each other. 
After using the mind's eye to analyze her stats again, Kyung decided that he might change her into a magician. Jahai came up to talk with Kyung, so Hyun left. Lee Ji Hai and Lee Kyung, the two devious ones, quickly caught up, and after a short discussion, they understood that both wanted to take control of the place. It seemed like the two reached an untold consensus. Lee Ji Hai would continue with her governor role, but Ki Young would be backing her up. Lee Ji Hai, knowing all too well that Ki Young wanted Hyun, offered to get closer to him. They kissed. What a devious plastic duo they made. A few days later, the situation changed completely. The pervert was kneeling an apology to Hyun, and people were discussing Ki Young's hidden leadership role and Ji Hai's following him. Hyun was isolated and still receiving hatred from people, and Lee Kyung was the only one to lean on. Things went just as planned by Kyung and Ji Hai. On the side, Kyung was instructing Hyun to use her magic power. It seemed as if Hyun was completely dependent upon Kyung now until he checked her status window. Hyun had already gained the magician title, but just before, she told Kyung that she had yet to control her power. So, Hyun has become a magician, but she is trying to hide it from him and pretending to have difficulty manipulating magic power. Why is she lying to him? While the two were training, one of Jihai's confidants came to find Ki Young and told him that she wanted to be part of the hunting team for the next expedition. Ki Young checked her status and found it to be all right, yet nowhere near comparable to his dear Hyun. Finally came the day of the announcement of new members. Everyone was murmuring that Hyun would surely be chosen to fight because she had been very close to Kyung lately. As for Hyun, hearing the gossip only made her think more about Kyung, and the reason was that she wanted to win his affection. He had already fallen for him. While waiting for the announcement to be made, the confidant happened to meet Hyun and revealed that she knew that Hyun liked Kyung, but she also knew what kind of person Kyung was. He only wanted people with the ability, and she planted the idea in Hyun's head that Kyung would abandon her. And finally, it was announced that Jung Hyun and Park Hyung, that woman, would be on the next hunt. On the stage, Ki Young and Hyun Sung were able to make a proactive speech to encourage people to train themselves to fight for their own sake. The campers were all excited. They then announced Hyun and the girl, Park Hyung, to join them in the next hunt. Hyung took his chance to warn Hyung against anything ill she wanted to do to Hyun. Seeing Ki Young whispering to Hyung furthered Hyun's self sabotage thoughts. Glancing down at Hyun, Ki Young was astounded by her maniac expression, but she immediately smiled at him. So Ki Young thought that she was just being delusional. Little did he know how much of a psychopath Hyun was. Park Ki Young, on the other hand, was totally threatened by Ki Young's words. She feared that Ki Young would use his soft power to isolate her, and she would fall even lower than Hyun. And so somehow, she concluded that she's got to make Ki Young love her to avoid it. He won't, girl, just stop already. The next day, the hunt began. Ki Young was still feeling some unrest about Hyun. This was not going to go well. During the first hunt, many monsters appeared. Hyun Sung and Duck Gu were the main attackers, while the other three, including Hyun, Ki Young, and Hai Young, supported from behind. However, when Duck Gu needed support as he couldn't handle the monster, Hai Young was so fearful that she froze and couldn't wield her knife to stab the monster. Ki Young stood behind, using both cheering and threatening words to push her to defeat the monster. It was just training for everyone to adapt. The real battle would be much more challenging. At night, despite feeling sleepy, Kyung couldn't sleep because he had a lot of thoughts about which direction he should go to survive, and what kind of place the continent mentioned in this strange announcement was, where this place was, and what happened to his home. However, in the end, he had no regrets. He then thought about Hyun Sung, a regressor who probably knew everything, but what happened in the past that made him return? While he was lost in thought, he saw Hyun with a terrifying look in her eyes. He thought he might be dizzy and seeing hallucinations because the Hyun he knew was a good girl and couldn't have such a scary look. Hyun gently stroked Kyung's hair and kept murmuring, my opa, and that she would never let anyone take him away from her. The next morning, Kyung woke up with two dark eye bags. He could only attribute Hyun's actions to jealousy and attest it. He deliberately helped park Kyung in front of Hyun. As expected, Hyun looked outrageous. This intense affection was out of Kyung's plan. 
He wanted her to depend on him as a sister only. Hyung was enraged as well, as she knew that Kyung was just using her and waited for her chance to get revenge, and it soon came. Hyun Sung started acting strangely. He tried to lead everyone to an underground dungeon. Hyung, already knowing that Hyun Sung was a regressor, understood that there must be valuable things down there. So he pretended not to see Hyun Sung's forced acting skill. The only actor thing about Hyun Sung was his handsome face. The team decided to come back and explore the dungeon the next day. They turned another way and faced a group of demons. When the boys were fighting, Hyung got away without anyone noticing. The team was about to safely retreat when Hyung came back screaming like crazy. He deliberately did that to attract the demons and took revenge on Ki Young. They hastily ran except for Hyun. She stood still, staring at Hyung. Everyone ran quickly because a lot of monsters were gathering. Dokgu became the bait to lure the monsters so that the others could head back to the shelter. Ki Young reminded Hai Young to hurry up and also told Hai An to run faster. Later, Hai Young teased Hai An by raising her middle finger, indicating that Ki Young was interested in herself as well. Then it was time to attack. While Ki Young was chanting a spell to use his magic skills, Dok Gu was beside him, chatting and admiring him, making it difficult for him to concentrate. This was not the time for chatting. Luckily, the fireball still hit and immediately defeated one monster. But when they turned around, they couldn't see Haiyan or Hai Young anymore. Just a moment ago, they were right behind Duck Go and Kiang. He immediately thought of Haiyan and sensed her magic power from behind. It turned out that Haiyan had realized that Hai Young was purposely falling down to terminate Ki Young. She used magic to create a magic frame that could block sound and prevent monsters from coming to find them. Without giving Hai Young a chance to explain or call for help, she used magic tape to shut her mouth and wind blades to cut her limbs off. Just as blood was spurting out, Ki Young arrived, which probably surprised Hai Young. Ki Young was terrified by what he saw, but he soon regained his calmness and he forced himself to make a quick decision. Calmly, he asked Haiyan if she was okay and pretended not to know anything. Haiyan followed Kiyoung's words and lied. She said that she lost consciousness and when she came around, things were already this way. To completely hide the scene, Kiyoung used his fire magic to namely give Haiyan a cremation, while Haiyan giggled like a psychopath. The two reunited with Duck Go, and they wanted to head back to the shelter, but Kyung fainted due to overuse of mana, so they stayed there for the night. That night, Duck Go, after getting comfortable from Haiyang's death, made an excuse to leave so that Ki Young and Haiyan had their time together. To break the silence, they both checked their status window, and Haiyan couldn't hold it but talked about the incident in the afternoon. Ki Young was terrified, of course. I mean, who wouldn't? But to hide his feeling, he hugged Haiyan and comforted her. Despite the fact that she was developing a toxic love for him, he knew that he would hold on tight to this girl to survive till the end. Why did Ki Young hug Haiyan? During a touching moment where a man and a woman hugged, Dukku appeared and called Haiyan as Nuna, older sister. Even though Haiyan was older than him, Dokgo explained that sooner or later, Haiyan would become his sister-in-law, so he needed to start getting used to calling her Nuna. This made Ki Young understand the reason why Haiyan suddenly started favoring him. Perhaps Dokgo had been encouraging her all along. Ki Young had told Dokgo to take care of Haiyan, and from then on, he would try his best to match them together. The next morning, Ki Young woke everyone up early to head back to the shelter. At the camp, Tahai was resting and getting a massage when the security guard reported that Ki Young had returned. She immediately ordered the entrance to be opened, and when Ki Young asked why it was closed, she explained that the previous morning, a few people, including the perverted Yu Suk Wu, had left the shelter, claiming to be part of a rescue team. They probably set out to do something for themselves. As they were talking, Sok Wu returned with a group of unfamiliar and scared people who gave Ki Young goosebumps. These newcomers didn't look like nice people. Ki Young was all tensed up, 
He made Jihai go to call Duck Goo and Hyan over while he welcomed the people. He quickly glanced at the leading man's status window and saw his title, a calculative murderer. This increased Kyung's precautions even more, but to his surprise, the man greeted him friendly and behaved quite nicely. Nevertheless, Kyung reserved his alerts. When Duck Go and Hyun ran over, Kyung was guiding the new groups through the camp. The two were also very wary of these newcomers. Jung, the leader, smiled and told them about the bad group of people who were hunting people instead of demons. They consisted of an archer and a swordsman. Basically, he was announcing that they were a very bad group. Two groups of people were standing face to face and tension was really building up, and they were just about to attack when Kim Hyun Sung came back. Ki Young was deeply relieved. He was close to pissing his pants. Ki Young explained the situation to Hyun Sung and suddenly, Hyun Sung seemed distressed. It was because of Jung Jin Ho. Hyun Sung tried to hold his hatred, but Ki Young did not let it slip. Jin Ho and Hyun Sung must have been enemies in the past life. Jin Ho tried to ask Hun Sun about his stats, but he refused to answer and instead mentioned the large group of survivors at the camp. After Hyun Sung greeted them, Kyung came to two conclusions. First, Jung Jin Ho is a murderer, and second, based on Hyun Sung's reaction, Jin Ho must have met him during his first regression and may have been a villain who slayed either Hyun Sung or people around him. Jin Ho offered to let his group stay at the camp in exchange for food, and to their surprise, Hyun Sung agreed immediately. Then, Duk Go, although not really agreed with this agreement, went with Jahai to introduce the new arrivals to the camp. Ki Young asked Jin Ho if he knew one of them. When questioned, Hyun Sung only gave a vague answer that it was a long ago relationship, and the other person might not even remember him. Ki Young informed Hyun Sung of Hai Young's death and tried to explain that she died from a magic power. Jin Ho's appearance turned out to be fortunate for Ki Young, as his class was a magic swordsman. After Hai Young's death, a suspicious magic swordsman appeared, the leader of the group of heinous murderers, the psychopath Jung Jin Ho. Thanks to this coincidence, Ki Young will be able to blame Jin Ho for being the killer. A few days later, Ki Young and Hyun Sung were having a discussion once again. For then, Hyun Sung had already believed that Jung was the one who ended Ha Young, just as Ki Young had planned. The next step would be to create a chance for Hyun Sung to execute them. So when they were planning for the next dungeon raid, Ki Young suggested to Hyun Sung that they could invite Jung's team to go with them. Hyun Sung agreed, but the two teams would go separately. On the other side, Jin Ho was gaining the trust of the campers acting as a helpful, nice man. Ki Young could didn't understand Jung's course of action, but he was planning to finish him, so whatever. But the camper started to talk shit about him. The audacity. I guess when you've helped someone too much, they felt entitled. Ki Young met up with Hyun and Duck Goo. Recently, Hyun had become way bolder in expressing her feelings to Ki Young, thanks to Duck Goo's enthusiastic support. In response to this, Ki Young commented that he was speechless. Nonetheless, the three came over to talk with Hyun Sung, and it seemed like he had prepared them something good. Hyun Sung gave them several valuable items that he found when he accidentally stumbled on a treasure chest. Ki Young felt that it was a wise decision to follow a regressor as their boss. The items they found included an iron dwarf steel bracelet, a sacred healing ring, and a magic shield ring. It appeared that the bracelet found its rightful owner in Duck Goo as it increased his endurance stats. Hyun chose the healing ring, as intended by Ki Young, to heal him when he gets hurt. The magic shield ring went to Ki Young and it could create two magic shields per day. Before embarking on the new expedition, Hyun Sung warned everyone to be careful of Jin Ho's party as they could be enemies, and it would be better to be prepared. On Jin Ho's team, they also questioned whether it was safe to go with Hyun Sung's group to clear the dungeon. Jin Ho assured them that it was also a great opportunity to slay Hyun Sung. Upon entering the dungeon, the two parties chatted aimlessly to let their guard down, and during the chit chat, Ki Young also admitted being in a relationship with Hyun. As they headed to the underground dungeon, the system announced a rare rank quest, which was compulsory and had already begun. They had to survive to complete the quest. There was a whole troop of these three-headed demons. The group wanted to retreat for safety, but the steel gate shut down and stopped them. They had no choice but to fight. Jin Ho, Hyun Sung, and Duck Goo fought fiercely, easily slaying demons by demons. On the side, Hyun was also using her magic to support them and got the demons closer to Jung's team members. Hyun took his 
his chance to ask Hyun not to help them, even if they begged her. Of course, Hyun agreed with her opa, so the two stand happily on the side to watch them struggling. They yelled at Kyung for help, but Kyung kept on saying nonsense to encourage them. He finally used his magic as they requested though, throwing a fireball at the demons. But this not only did not help, but it also increased the danger. The fireballs didn't harm the demons at all, but only coated them with a layer of the blaze. Kyung intentionally gave the monsters a blaze coat to lure Jin Ho into showing his magic swordsmanship. However, even after one of Jin Ho's subordinates was captured by the monster, Jin Ho did nothing except plead with Kyung for help. Kyung pretended to be charging magic power and couldn't do anything to save the captive. After a while, it seemed that the monster had already made a meal out of the captive, and Kyung signaled to Hyun to extinguish the flame. Hyun used a water strike to put out the monster's flaming coat. Then one of Jin Ho's people grabbed Kyung by the neck and blamed him for murdering their companion, hitting him hard. Jin Ho saw what was happening and told the guy to calm down, saying that further conflict wouldn't benefit anyone. However, the angry guy still wouldn't listen, and Kyung started to act out. He hit his head an apology to everyone for his uselessness and prepared to commit seppuku to avenge the guy who was eaten by the monster. Everyone urged him to stop. Yun Sung came over to Kyung, who was still sitting there blaming himself and helped him up. Hyun Aryandere was outrageous seeing her opa being hit. She wanted to take revenge on his behalf. To ensure his disposition as a victim, Kyung patted Hyun's head to prevent her from attacking. To inflict anger on the opposite side, he acted like he was deeply hurt and got close to Hyun. The pervert who liked Hyun was totally pissed off by this side. Then, Ki Young's chance came as another bunch of demons appeared and attacked the group. They quickly went into combat readiness. To create Suk Wu a chance to attack him, Ki Young made Hyun go to fight. He approached Suk Wu with a detailed self-protection plan. He asked Suk Wu if he was jealous, and things went just as planned. Hand. The man couldn't bear his anger, so he slashed his sword at Ki Young. It was hurt, obviously, way more than Ki Young had expected. He yelled, and everyone quickly noticed the situation. Jin Ho, as a calculative murderer, knew that the only way to redeem was to finish his comrade. He rushed up with his sword, but things did not go in his favor. The other follower of him approached Ki Young from the back and stabbed him. Yun Sung then drew his sword to fight back against the opposing team, but also reminded Duk Gu and Hyun to take care of Ki Young. The two attackers wanted to run away after attacking Ki Young, but decided to stay until he was completely dead before leaving. Meanwhile, Ayan and Duck Gu were crying and urging Ki Young to wake up. Duck Gu was frustrated and suggested that Ayan use her healing ring to heal Ki Young instead of crying. It was so miraculous that even Ki Young's broken tooth was restored after Ayan used the healing ring. Ki Young used his magic shield ring to create a shield to help them endure while he was recovering. But at that moment, Dok Gu couldn't find Hyun anywhere. While the attacker was running away, Hyun appeared behind him, chopped his limbs by magic, and then sent him to death to avenge her opa. Back to Ki Young and Dok Gu, they succeeded in capturing Sok Wu. Ki Young told Dok Gu to close his eyes, and then used his sword to kill Sok Wu, ignoring his begging for mercy. At the same time, the system announced that a new class was open for him. Ki Young and Dok Gu went on to find Hyun Sung and Hyun, but it was Hyun who found them. She rushed to hug Ki Young caringly. When Duck Gu asked her where she had gone, Hyun couldn't hold her tears. Well, she never could, and told them about her slaying the other man from Jin Ho's gang. Seeing her sobbing so hard, Duck Gu and Ki Young quickly came and comforted her. Duck Gu was extremely proud of his love consultation result when seeing Ki Young and Hyun hugging. Then, Hyun Sung, after a fierce fight, also arrived. The team soothed each other's feelings and headed back. All four felt that their bond might have been tightened much more after overcoming such tough incidents. That night, when they were taking a rest, Hyun consulted with Hyun Sung about his new class. All of them were quite sound. Hyun Sung was brutally honest about his consultation. He quickly pointed out Kyung's lack of magic power and combat skills. He recommended the alchemist class for Kyung. Seeing how Hyun Sung was enthusiastic about this class, Kyung knew that this must be a rare and useful thing in the future. Then, suddenly, Duk Gu raised his voice saying that Ki Young must become a black magician. There they went again, silly fight because of Ki Young's class. Duk Gu and Hyun Sung each had their own reasoning. Duk Gu wanted Ki Young to become a black magician 
Jin because he would look cool in a black robe of darkness, but Hyun Sung warned that black magicians are very dangerous due to how badly the world perceives them. The two argued and couldn't come to a decision, so they decided to ask Kayan. However, she couldn't decide between an alchemist who uses intelligence and a black magician who uses the power of darkness. Hyun Sung then pulled out an item, which coincidentally only an alchemist can use, an introduction book to alchemy. All of this was just to persuade Ki Young to become an alchemist. Finally, Ki Young's choice was to become an alchemist. That night, when everyone had gone to sleep, Ki Young opened up the alchemy book to study. He realized that becoming an alchemist would become item intensive and cost a lot of money. Yun Sung noticed that Ki Young was still awake and asked if he was concerned. The two talked about the dungeon and believed that they had reached the last stage of the tutorial dungeon, which meant that the exit was nearby, the land, a place where only a minority of survivors could go. The next day, the team went on with their expedition and everyone seemed so much more relaxed. Yun Sung even made a lame joke about radish. They went inside a door and saw a magic circle on the floor. It seemed like the magic circle was the key to opening the next door. The system also announced a special quest to conquer this place. Ki Young was still finding hints when Hyun Sung stepped into the circle and poured his mana into it. The circle lit up and just like that, the quest was easily finished. The door opened and the four were welcomed by a young girl. She was the vice guild master of the Blue Guild, Lee Sang Hee. She explained that she and her people were just like Ki Young's team. They also got summoned out of nowhere and had been through it all. Then, Sang Hee offered to guide them to the guild's base while her team searched for other survivors. She asked the team to hand over their weapons. Ki Young checked her stats and it was flying colors, but they also showed that she was a green flag, so he was temporarily rested in his mind. Stepping out of the dungeon, it was sunset by then. The team finally saw some sunset. It was then that they felt somewhat settled after all the hustle in the last three months. On the way to the guild's headquarters, the vice master introduced everyone about the characteristics of the place they were in now. She also announced that they were the group that cleared the dungeon in the shortest time, three months, while normally it would take six months to do it. At the headquarters, everything was grand and fancy, and the team were welcomed with a banquet. At the banquet, everyone introduced themselves and their roles in the group. When Ki Young introduced his name and said he was an alchemist, he thought the vice master would be interested in him because of his dear Hyun Sung, the regressor, had recommended him to become an alchemist. But contrary to Ki Young's expectation, the vice master seemed disappointed, which made Ki Young doubt whether he was just a potion factory for Hyun Sung. Afterwards, the vice master offered them to join the association with favorable terms. Hyun Sung wanted to discuss it in detail, which meant he was interested in joining. Ki Young speculated that Hyun Sung the Regressor could have also been part of the Blue Guild in his first life. The conversation continued as Lee Sang Hee explained to them about the continent. It consists of many nations, among which were the three largest and most powerful ones, and the Holy Empire where they were at was one of the three. The Blue Guild was once the strongest guild of the nation, but was going down quickly in recent years. They wanted to recruit Ki Young's team. Young thought that the guild was a bit too desperate and he saw no prospect from them. But Hyun Sung looked very convinced. Ki Young was surprised, but he trusted Hyun Sung's regressor identity. It must be that Hyun Sung had a plan in his head. They left to rest after finishing dinner. The group decided to have a small discussion in Ki Young's room before sleep. Kyung and Hyun Sung knew that the situation was rather beneficial for them, as they were wanted by all of the guilds. Hyun Sung was big on joining the Blue Guild, and hearing that Kyung also agreed with him, he was deeply relieved. Our regressor had also known to entrust Kyung with intellectual tasks. Going back to his room, Hyun Sung couldn't hold his tears thinking of his past life. It looked like he was the guild master of Blue and last time, he couldn't protect his followers. The next morning, the team went to meet the councils of the guild for contract negotiation. For Ki Young, this was the moment when he was exposed as the burden of the group, but upon reflection, his stats were a lot better than when he first started. Ki Young walked in and faced a council of bigwigs in the guild. They asked to confirm whether his class was an alchemist. When they found out that his magic stat was only 8, they said it was not very high, considering that he had gone through two class changes, and they expected it to be at least 10. They promised to treat him well like other team members, as it felt like a lot to give the alchemist even 1,000 gold. 
This indirectly suggested that Keong was just a burden to the team. The old farts treated him poorly, but at least Lee Sung Hee, the vice master, had an all right attitude towards him. Although the terms were quite favorable for a beginner alchemist, Keung still needed more time to consider. This consideration surprised the old farts, as they thought a greenhorn like him had no right to be so arrogant. Keung came out to discuss with his team. The three seemed really satisfied with what the Blue Guild had offered them. Hyun and Duk Gu wanted to let Keung make the decision, while Hyun Sung was all about the Blue Guild. Keung didn't tell them what had happened inside. He told them to wait for the demonstration to hear the offers from the other guilds. Hyun Sung also realized that he was being too impulsive. Ayan then asked Keung to go on a date with her, so he agreed to a group walk after encouraging them to practice. He wanted everyone on his team to be fully ready on the demonstration day and to show the Blue Guild that he was the director of this film. A few days later, Duk Go and Keung were having a lighthearted chit chat. It had been a few days since Keung last met Hyun. This was in order to help her control her addiction to Keung. As a magician with unlimited growth potential, she was the most valuable asset to Keung so he had been using classical conditioning on her, giving her rewards after every gain and treating her coldly if she didn't make any progress. Dokgu was still super proud of his results, completely ignorant of Ki-young's worries when having a Yandere girl obsessed with him. On the day of the demonstration, they were treated very well before the performance. In stark contrast to the attitude the old farts had towards him during the contract negotiation meeting, Young looked towards the shelter, but he couldn't find Lee Ji Hai. Sometimes he missed her persistence, and he wished she was there so that the two of them could make the stubborn old boomers finally approve. Firstly, the vice guild master gave a speech thanking everyone who came to watch and also thanked the raiding team for completing the dungeon tutorial. Young's group, none other than the protagonists of today's demonstration, Ayan appeared in an unstable state with a bloody nose and her thin body seemingly exhausted from excessive training. Young felt sorry for her and he only hoped that she could perform well. The first person to demonstrate was Hyun, introduced as the newbie magician. Because she was afraid of being abandoned again if she disappointed her opa, Hyun used all of her strength to perform a terrifying demonstration. She created an earthquake and a large hole on the stage. Everyone was in disbelief, and large guild scouts came to recruit her. Kyung also went and praised her, calling her the Grand Magician and his dear Hyun. Ayan rushed to Kyung for her reward, leaving all the guild masters confused. Kyung scanned her stats and compared them to other experienced magicians. He realized how much of a genius she was. He hugged her and placed a kiss on her forehead to announce to everyone that they were a couple deeply in love. This was part of his plan, of course. He was using Ayan to increase his value, but still, Ayan's love was a bit unbearable. The next one to come up on stage was Hyun Sung. He would have to spar with another swordsman that had a slightly higher overall stat than him. But Kyung was completely confident in his comrade. Hyun Sung did not disappoint either. He fought bravely with a calm smile, stunning his opponent with his skillful sword and his handsome face. No one can deny Hyun Sung's face. Kyung noticed that Hyun Sung was still holding back. It seemed like he feared being suspected if he were to show his full ability. Suddenly, Hyun Sung let go of his sword, which surprised his opponent. The man took a chance and punched him forcefully, so much that he flew out and the stage was broken. Although lost to his competitor, Hyun Sung showed high dexterity and endurance while holding back and not revealing all his strategies. Next up was Duk Gu, who was introduced as a tank and shield warrior. The test for him was to withstand attacks from a tutorial monster for three minutes. Despite being continuously attacked by the monster, Duk Gu managed to endure the three minutes and even became friends with that monster. The last performer was Kyung, who used his alchemy power to create a blue flame column in the middle of the stage. The blue color implied that he was targeting the blue guild. After the performance, many big guilds came to invite them to join them. The payment offered increased from 2,000 gold to 6,000 gold, which was quite tempting. These guilds also recognized Kyung as a skilled player and continuously offered him attractive proposals, even giving him their business cards. While enjoying the atmosphere and celebrating together, a 
red-haired girl with a stunning figure flew over Kyung's group and called them cuties and wanted to talk to them. Kyung looked up the lady's stats and they were flawless. She was the strongest person he had met so far. She offered a handshake, and though Hyun tried to stop it, Kyung accepted it. She then offered Kyung and Hyun some huge money, so much that Kyung was immediately convinced. But the look on Hyun Sung's face prevented him from accepting the offer. The red-headed lady's guild was an elite one that focused on close-range combat, but they were shifting toward a more balanced strategy. Thus, they were open for magicians only. Dok Gu and Hyun Sung were excluded. Kyung scared our boys when he said that the offer was really lucrative, but he then refused it. The lady did not seem that bothered, but she held Kyung's chin and kissed him, saying that this was a punishment to Hyun for her killing intent. Hyun screamed maniacally, and Kyung froze in fear. Luckily, the lady let go before Hyun exploded. She gave Kyung a magic necklace before leaving. Kyung went on to do his liaison with the guilds. Dukgu was extremely frustrated as well. How could that lady offend his OTP like that? The Blue Guild showed up, led by their guild vice headmaster Lee Sung Hee. They wanted to meet with Kyung to discuss and renegotiate the terms of the contract. In addition to offering Kyung a much better condition than they previously did, Blue Guild also allowed him to form a new unit, as the party leader's authority was equivalent to their administrative leader. However, it seemed that all these conditions were not satisfactory to Kyung. The vice headmaster had to use her last resort. They would appoint him as the leader of the non-combatant class group administration, but it seemed that Kyung wanted more. The team leader, a boomer, could not hold back any longer, so he used magic and killing intent to slay Kyung, causing him to be unable to breathe. The vice master and the others on the council were trying to stop team leader Lee, but he refused to stop. However, the moment Kyung mentioned the name Cha Hira, the mercenary queen, he immediately stopped. It seemed that the influence she had on the continent was greater than expected. If Queen Hira find out about what happened to him, the Blue Guild would be in big trouble. Finally, Kyung asked one last crucial question, where the guildmaster was. Kyung got it right. The Blue Guild's master was missing. The old man was enraged again. He lost his cool and started to blow up Kyung for disrespecting his guild, even though the vice master had warned him to stop. Kyung was not afraid as well. He continued to provoke the old man. Then Lee sang he, the vice master, couldn't hold her temper as well. She scolded the man and made the guard bring him out. Before leaving, he did not forget to give Kyung a cliche threat of villains. Just you wait. Sang Hee then apologized to Kyung, but she was still protecting her people, saying that they were just too sensitive since their guildmaster was missing. Then the two were able to agree on the contract's terms, ensuring that Kyung had his management position secured. He then found Hyun Sung to ask about the Red Mercenary. He wanted to talk with Cha Hira, the redhead lady. Hyun and Duk Gu were immediately pissed off hearing that, but Kyung said that it was all in the team's interest. Yun Sung, of course, was happy to hear that. Ayan, however, started her emotional crisis again, so Kyung had to stay and comfort her. Ayan blames Kyung because he doesn't listen to her. Ayan worried Kyung would abandon her, so she used magic to control Kyung. Kyung changed his attitude to make Ayan calmer. The truth is, Hayan is an incredible card. Kyung can't throw her away, and the person who should worry to fear of being dumped is him, not Hayan. Currently, both Kyung and Hayan aren't strong enough to protect each other, and Kyung still leaves because he needs Hira's power to become stronger. Hayan doesn't want Kyung to have to stay on Hira's good side. Hayan wants to become stronger than Hira to be able to protect Kyung and make that become a motivation to strive. After settling down Hayan, Kyung went to meet Hira. He wore the necklace that Hira gave him and prepared himself to make a deal with her. Awakened by Kyung's knock on the door, Hira angrily scolds Kyung, but upon realizing that the person in front of the door is Kyung, Hira becomes calmer. Then, Hira asks Kyung's purpose because she doesn't like wasting time. Kyung asks Hiro to become his sponsor. Hira seems interested in it because no one had dared to talk to her like that yet. Hira tells Kyung to come to her side and do some cute things. She will consider sponsoring Kyung. 
He Young explains that he wants Hira to sponsor his team and both Hira and he will receive benefits. Hira said that Ki Young's offer would only take effect when he and his girlfriend Hyun came together. But if only Ki Young came, Hira had no reason to invest in the whole Ki Young's guild. Instead, Hira offers to play around Ki Young because he is Hira's type. Then we'll give Ki Young some money back. In the face of Hira's onslaught, Ki Young remains adamant about his decision and ensures that Hira will receive benefits if she invests in his guild. Because Ki Young's attitude is so confident and sure, Hira wants to know more. Ki Young already has Hyun and his captain, Hyun Sung. Their strength is very strong, and if Hira expands the relationship with them, it will definitely benefit her. However, the benefits Ki Young has just offered didn't attract Hira's attention. There is no other way. Ki Young is forced to use Plan B. Ki Young is forced to switch to Plan C to evoke Hira's emotions and combine with Plan D to close the deal. Then, Hira agrees and they start exchanging items. After careful consideration, Hira decides to sponsor the Kyung Guild and receive 3% of the profits in return. Although it seems suspicious, it was better than an agreement that failed, so Kyung agreed to Hira's conditions. After a successful deal with Hira, Kyung achieved the new title of the Lover of the Mercenary Queen. Although a little embarrassing, his next days were extremely smooth. Later, Kyung moved to a new base. Kyung was very happy with what he achieved because he was very efforted to get this position. As soon as he opened the door, Kyung stumbled over the gifts that Hira sent. There are still many rumors about Kyung becoming Hira's lover, and Kyung faces many their judgmental eyes. Hyun Sung asked Kyung about what Kyung had agreed with Hira. Kyung apologized to Hyun Sung for not being able to tell him earlier because he was busy before. Then, Kyung says that he only asked Hira to sponsor them, and she agreed. And these are just Hira's dirty tricks. Hyun Sung is also surprised by Hira's different attitude. He is happy that Kyung can leave a good impression on Hira to help their guild grow. Hyun Sung tells Kyung about the dungeon called the Garden of Terror, which is a rare ranked dungeon that was recently discovered, and they were responsible for attacking that dungeon. In preparation for the dungeon attack, Kyung decides to recruit more members, and Hyun Sung also agrees with that idea. Vice President Sang He is gathering information about the dungeon. Sol Ho says that they have reached Area C. Sang He predicts that they may run out of food because they have traveled so far, so she decides to support them with more food and other necessities. After that, Sang He asked Sol Ho to look at the headquarters while she brought newcomers to Lindell. Sang He also reminds Sol Ho to curb his temper towards newcomers. After arranging everything, Sang He left. Sol Ho showed his evil nature and stopped supporting the food for Seung Goon's group in the dungeon because Sung Ho doesn't want Sung Joon to return alive. Kyung was announced as Blue Guild's non-combatant special administrative officer. Everyone was amazed at this notice, and Kyung feels very enjoying the feeling of being respected. Suddenly, Kyung discovered Jahai. Kyung wanted Jahai to join his guild because she was smart and agile. After that, Sengi told Kyung that he could choose anyone to become a member of his team, and Blue Guild would support him. At the same time, Sengi also announced that she will take the newcomers to Lindell, the free city. As soon as they were about to leave, Yun Sung was bothered by a bunch of people. After seeing the problem clearly, Kyung helped Yun Sung by throwing money to the crowd and letting them leave. After dealing with the crowd, they continue on their way to Lindell. But because there were some problems, Sengi says that they will walk there. Kyung seems unhappy with having to walk. Hyun and Dok Gu also arrive. They brought a boat that seemed very heavy. Dok Gu said that he would use it on the way to Lindell, and if Kyung felt tired, he could get on the boat to sit so that Dok Gu would pull Kyung away. Along the way, Dok Gu talks a lot which annoys Kyung, but Kyung realizes that Hyun's state is better and Dok Gu does a good job of taking care of Hyun's spirit. Finally, they went to Lindell, the city worth living in that everyone always aimed for, but in Hyun Sung's eyes, it was a ruined city. Everyone on the team was overwhelmed by the magnificence of Lindell City, and there were many Koreans gathered there. Kyung's group went to the Blue Guild's building. Inside the building, everything was decorated very grandly. 
After dividing the room among everyone, Sangi gave Kiang a tour of his personal alchemy lab. Kiang was very grateful that the Blue Guild had prepared such a full alchemy lab for him. Taking advantage of that opportunity, Kiang decided to stay at the alchemy lab and work hard. Then everyone splits up to work. Dukgu goes to strength training, Ayan practices magic, and Hyun Sun goes to the slum. Knowing that Hyun Sun was going to the slum, the team stopped him because they were worried that he was too kind and would cause more trouble for the guild. But after learning that Hyun Sun wanted to go there to find someone to work with, no one stopped him. Kyung also predicted that there was a fifth member of the guild at the slum, so he gave Hyun Sun the freedom to act. Then everybody said goodbye to each other and went to work. In the lab, Kyung is tense to create the drug. The alchemy is a job that needs to be delicate because the material for conducting an experiment is very expensive. During the experiment, the alchemists would fail so many times that to create a new formula, they would spend a lot of money. After creating most of the drugs sold at the store, Kyung feels very satisfied. Duck Go goes to the lab to give Kyung the mailer because he wants to find a reason to meet Kyung. Even though they live in the same house, they never meet. Hyun also comes to give Kyung food. Kyung is touched that Hyun has cooked for him, although sometimes Hyun behaved a little crazy, but she was really a good girl. While Kyung was thinking, Duck Goo was knocked out by Hyun's meatballs. Kyung saw such results and didn't care to eat, but was forced by Hyun and didn't escape the same result as Duck Goo. Kyung wakes up after eating Hyun's mysterious meatball. He is scared when he sees the scene around the meatball. Duk Gu has not regained consciousness after eating that dish from hell. Kyung used the medicine he had just made to wake Duk Gu. Not only did this medicine help Duk Gu to recover energy. Later, Kyung asked Hyun and Duk Gu about Hyun Sung's situation currently. Hyun Sung seemed to be having recruitment problems at the slum, so Kyung decides to go there to help Hyun Sung. In the slums, Kyung has discovered someone who has the ability to become a legendary priest, but the competition is high because there are many people who want a recruiter but are rejected by her. All of the other guilds chose to pretend to be kind to help the poor people of the slums to win the priest's favor, so Kyung chose the opposite way, which was aggression. Kyung scolds the slum dwellers for being pigs because they only rely on the priest even though they can afford everything themselves, but the priest does not believe it. She still believes that the people here are thrown away by society. They are pitiful and need her care. And what Kyung says is only offensive to them. There are no grounds to believe. After a while of explanation, the priest was still determined not to trust what Kyung said, so Kyung thought of a way to make people live in this slum to show their lies. Kyung offers to provide them with a suitable job and an attractive salary. They will be provided with hot food and accommodation depending on how hard they work. They are enthusiastic about Kyung's tempting offer. The priest tries to hold on, but they all follow Kyung's offer. Everything happens so fast, everyone wants to work for Kyung, but the priest has no way to keep them. Kyung offers the priest to work for him to conveniently monitor him and the people in the slum. After Kyung let the priest see the truth about the people in the slum, he also reminded the priest not to think of others, but to think about herself. Kyung woke up after a long sleep, but it seemed that he wasn't sleeping very good. But Kyung still felt very satisfied because he successfully exposed the people in the slum. As expected, just a few days, people in the slum will become lazy with the work they received from Kyung because they are familiar with life cared for by the priest without having to do anything. And humans are not easy to change a habit. Kyung came to the slum again to continue exposing the lies of the people here for the priest. Despite seeing everything, the priest chose to trust her faith and not care about the other what Kyung said. The priest warns Kyung if he continues to do so, she is forced to evict Kyung from the slum. Kyung didn't expect He Young to be so unconvinced. While Kyung was thinking, he was suddenly beaten by the people he had just reported to the priest. Despite knowing that Kyung was beaten, Kyung allowed the people in the slum to continue beating Kyung because she thought Kyung deserved it. After being beaten by the people in the slum, they plan to sell Kyung to the black market to make money. While they are discussing, Kyung comes up with the next plan and quickly hides. 
Kyung asked Hyun to turn him into a girl, a beautiful girl. After turning into a girl, Kyung changed his name to Kyon. Then, along with Hyun, to the slum again to take revenge on the crowd there. They took advantage of the drunken people in the slum and performed a drama in front of the priest. Although he young didn't want to believe it, but what was happening in front of her was true. The lies of the people in the slum were discovered. Kyung's drama awakens he young. Now that the false face of the slum lazy people have been exposed, he young blames herself for selfishly avoiding the truth and harming innocent people. He young chased liars out of the slum. She was trying to save Kyung but failed. He young called for help from the guilds but they left. He young regrets that she spent time taking care of these evil people. The bad people here he young regret taking care of them and they also respond that they only took advantage of he young's kindness. They are planning to finish both he young and Kion because there are no witnesses around. Kion silently reminds he young to action while the knife gets closer and closer to him. When Kion is in danger, he young awakens. She prays to gain strength then increases it again. He Young has completely turned into a shadow priest. Ki Young is amazed at how brutal He Young is after she transforms into the shadow priest. He Young gradually becomes more terrifying. He Young destroys all liars and lets no one escape from the slum. At this time, Hyun's magic has been exhausted and Ki Young is returned to his male form. He Young, after dealing with those people, also finds that Ki Young is a male. He Young was very angry because of this incident. She was going to destroy Ki Young. Hyun stood out to protect Ki Young. He thought he was close to being destroyed, but in the end, He Young forgave Ki Young and He Young apologized to Ki Young for not believing him. He Young is blaming herself now. She lives more as a murderer than a priest. Ki Young takes on a hidden mission and quickly goes to comfort He Young. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Ki Young invited He Young to work together to create a new Lindell, which He Young accepted and volunteered to be loyal to Ki Young. On the way back to the building of the Blue Guild, Ayan and He Young seemed very harmonious. They talked a lot until they arrived at the building. After that, they met Hyun Sung. Ki Young was planning to surprise Hyun Sung because he helped Hyun Sung recruit a high level priest, but Hyun Sung showed his unknown face that made Ki Young difficult to understand. Ki Young realizes that the person Hyun Sung is looking for is the girl next to him, Yuri, not the priest in the slum, He Young. At first, Yuri seems difficult to interact with people. But after joining the guild, Yuri is more open than she even beats Duck Go when participating in the eating competition. Hyun Sung wants to go conquer the dungeon together. However, they will not go alone, but will join another guild. At Blue Guild's office, Sol Ho is discussing which guild will join the dungeon quest along with their Team 7. On the day of the dungeon quest, there were many guilds waiting there. The Black Swan Guild even hired reporters to write news for them. Everyone here is a member of the big guild, so their stats are very high. While Ki Young was looking at the stats of others, a member of the Black Swan Guild came to attack Ki Young. Ki Young is planning to take revenge on Petra because she attacked Ki Young while participating in the dungeon quest. Ki Young takes advantage of Young Gi's sympathy. He plots a story to entice Young Gi to become an ally. In addition, Ki Young also goes to make friends with more people to strengthen his allies. Petra isn't happy to see Ki Young making friends everywhere, so she attacks Ki Young. But Ki Young responds, leaving her in a passive position. Later, Ki Young used Petra to create evidence to help him extract more allies. Not only that, but Ki Young also said that the leader of the Black Swan Guild sent her to his dungeon just to destroy her. Because Petra is not only useless, but also causes trouble all over the world, and the leaders couldn't bear to have Petra's reputation diminished, so they wanted to destroy her. Kyung also touches on Petra's pain when mentioning that she was demoted and he also predicts that after conquering this dungeon, Petra will also be destroyed by the team members. Successfully angering Petra, Kyung was beaten by Petra just as he wished. Kyung starts acting as he prepared. Petra makes a mistake of thinking that Hira alone protects Kyung, but the truth is that everyone is on Kyung's side. 
They began to conquer the second boss. The scene was extremely panic-stricken. Vine monsters attacked everywhere. Kyung and Hyun combined with each other to find, while Hyun Sung implemented the plan and divided the work for everyone. Everyone was shocked by the ability of Kyung's team and Hyun Sung's leadership skills. They couldn't believe that this was a rookie group because their skills were like those with a lot of experience. While the others were struggling to deal with the monsters, at this time inside the Blue Guild, everyone was coordinating very smoothly to fight the monsters. After fighting for a while, the Blue Guild managed to destroy the second monster in the dungeon and highlight the reputation of the Blue Guild. However, after winning, they were still reprimanded by Petra for arbitrarily separating from the original squad without informing Petra. Of Petra's scolding, Hyun Sung wasn't competent enough to handle it, so Kyung helped Hyun Sung handle the issue. Kyung turned into a victim to deal with Petra, and he succeeded to attract the attention of everyone to help him chase Petra out of the group. After Petra and the Black Swan Guild left, the dungeon quest was extremely favorable. After conquering the dungeon, Kyung convinces a reporter to work for the Blue Guild. They publish an article that discredits the Black Swan Guild, and Petra is furious when she learns that. While Kyung was gloating about the Black Swan Guild's news, their leader came to meet Kyung. Unexpectedly, their new vice president is Jahai. Kyung realizes that Jahai is still the same person who is egotistical and uses others to his advantage. Jahai brings Petra to apologize to Kyung for what Petra did to Kyung in the dungeon and compensate Kyung for his emotional loss. But Jahai gave Kyung too much benefit than normal compensation and was suspected by Kyung. Jahai explains that because she likes Kyung, she gives Kyung so many benefits, but Kyung doesn't bother to contact her. Jahai offers to be Kyung's sponsor because she likes Kyung. Jahai is still valuable, so Kyung doesn't turn down her offer. As soon as she got out the door, Jahai faced Hyun, seeing both of them in the same room, so Hyun was jealous and looked very scary. Kyung is not sure what excuse to use to justify the two of them sharing a room when Jahai saves him. Jahai explains a misunderstanding to Hyun and calms Hyun down. Hyun Sung dreamed of his old dream. In the near future, a war engulfed the entire continent, and the great magician said something incomprehensible before passing away. The shaman who was leaving Cilia was finished, and it wasn't clear whether the mercenary queen was still alive. Countless heroes and humans were destroyed, and Hyun Sung lost many who he had considered family. The black magician who betrayed Hyun Sung because he just sided with the faction that was more likely to win, that was the work of his superiors. Hyun Sung is so angry at the black magician's betrayal, Hyun Sung reproaches the black magician and he doesn't have a single shred of remorse. The black magician doesn't care what Hyun Sung says, instead he lashes out at Hyun Sung's spirit. The black magician also asked Hyun Sung to destroy his teammate beside him, but Hyun Sung did not agree and rushed to attack the black magician. But the black magician's strength was higher than Hyun Sung's, so Hyun Sung was affected by the attack and injured. Hai Jin was captured by the black magician, who threatened that if Hyun Sung didn't destroy his teammates, the black magician would destroy Hai Jin. Hyun Ung's teammate sacrificed herself to save Hai Jin. Then Hyun Sung woke up after the dream. After waking up, Hyun Sung was called to eat by his teammates. At this time, he was thinking of his own plan. While they were eating, Sangi announced an emergency meeting and invited Ki Young and Hyun Sung to the conference room for a meeting, which for Hyun Sung was an important life changing step. Hyun Sung reassured Ki Young not to worry. He will try to show his best to become the captain and make the best decisions to change the future of their team. The problem that their team is facing is their president. In the process of conquering the dungeon, he was locked in the dungeon. Sang Hee will send everyone to rescue the guild leader, including Sol Ho, and everything in the Blue Guild will leave Hyun Sung in charge. But Sol Ho didn't accept this result for the seventh team. He wanted the seventh team to also participate in the campaign to rescue the captain in this dungeon. Hyun Sung agreed to participate in this rescue campaign. Young also predicted that Hyun Sung would decide like that. He was just angry by the attitude of Sol Ho. Looking at how Sol laughed, 
Kyung silently calculated the plan to eliminate him when Kyung rescued the captain. Kyung asks Jahai to help him destroy Sol Ho, and he promises to spend time dating Jahai after she's done. Jahai sent a love letter back to Kyung in the form of a diagnosis letter. Kyung laughed at Jihai's creative way while he was reading the letter. Kyung felt scared. It was Haiyan. She suspected Kyung was reading the love letter, but Kyung explained that it was only a medical examination letter, so Haiyan spared him. Saying he felt guilty about taking them all to this dark dungeon, but Kyung's team didn't look like people suffering at all. However, Sang He still promised to make it up to them well after they completed their mission. They find out that Duk Go is not found. Suddenly, a girl introduces herself as Duk Go's girlfriend, Jung Yan. She says that she has come back to get things. The owner of the dungeon sees that the lovers are taking care of each other was very angry. She radiated an overwhelming source of power that made Kyung's team shudder in fear. Entering the dungeon, as soon as he arrived, the hero-ranked dungeon showed its overwhelming power. Illusions began to appear around and Kyung saw no one else but him. Countless scenes from the past appear in front of Kyung, one by one to manipulate him, but they still can't control Kyung. Eventually, Kyung comes out of the illusion, but he still loses his energy due to the influence of the dungeon. Later, Hyun Sung found Kyung and helped Kyung recover his energy. After recovering, Kyung and Hyun Sung helped others. Their teammates were controlled by illusion. Kyung is looking into Hyun's situation. Hyun's condition is extremely bad because jealousy drives her crazy. Kyung thinks that maybe the boss of this dungeon is not Juliana but Hyun. Hyun Sung is planning to conquer Juliana. With his current power, he cannot beat her, however, but their current goal is to rescue the alive and captain. At the same time, Hyun Sung must also find the legendary rank sword to conquer Juliana. At this time, Kyung is having trouble with Hyun's jealousy. She has become frantic and no longer calm to listen to Kyung. Hyun has locked Kyung into a hero rank trap. People can't see or hear Kyung from the outside. However, something miraculous happened. Jung Yong could see Kyung from the outside. Kyung asked Jung Yong to help him escape this trap. The trap is quite complicated, with Jung Yong's current ability not to help Kyung escape the trap. However, Jung Yong has helped Kyung to talk. Kyung proposes to use physical power to influence the trap, and he wants to ask Duk Go for help. At this time, Hyun Sung also discovers the disappearance of Kyung and Hyun. He is worried that they will be in danger, so he searches for them everywhere. Kyung just mentioned Duk Go when he appeared. Then Kyung asked about the time Duk Go and Jung Yeon fell in love and said goodbye to them. Duk Go tries to destroy the trap to save Kyung, but with no results. After being encouraged by Kyung and added motivation, Duk Go focused all his strength on the trap. In the end, Duk Go succeeds in destroying the trap and rescuing Ki Yang. Ki Yang is very touched. He keeps his promise to Jung Yan. He will sponsor their dating expenses, including all expenses across the mainland. At this time, Hyun discovered the trap was destroyed, so she immediately returned and attacked the people who helped Ki Yang escape. However, as soon as Hyun returned, Ki Yang successfully gave Hyun pills to awaken her from the illusion. The others are also rescued by Ki Yang, with the new medicine Ki Yang has just prepared. Later, Sang He felt she was incompetent to become a responsible person for everyone, so she ceded the position of captain to Hyun Sung. Finally, they entered the boss's room, Juliana's residence. Everyone is prepared to fight because this is a high level boss, so everyone must be careful, so Hyun Sung reveals the plan to everyone and directs them to fight. Hyun can only trust Hyun Sung's leadership ability. Hyun Sung is injured by Juliana's attack because her attack is too erratic and she is protected by barriers around her that make it difficult for them to access. While the match was tense, Juliana suddenly attacked Kyung. Everyone was worried about Kyung. Kyung used his genius acting skills to deal with Juliana and successfully neutralized her attack, at the same time making Juliana calmer. Realizing his action was working, Kyung resumed the role, becoming Gedrick, Juliana's boyfriend. But only moments later, Juliana discovered Kyung was not Gedrick. 
However, Keon quickly salvages the situation by saying a line that only Gedrick and Juliana know. Now, Juliana fully believes Keong is Gedrick. After gaining Juliana's trust, Keong works with his teammates to act out Gedrick's arrest to intimidate Juliana into compromising. Juliana was furious and summoned the cursed sword to attack them on this side. Hyun Sung was also well prepared to fight Juliana. Hyun Sung increased his strength to the maximum, predicting that he could handle Juliana with such power. But Juliana suddenly increased his strength, causing Hyun Sung not to have time to react. While Hyun Sung was in danger, Hyung distracted Juliana, creating an opportunity for Hyun Sung to finish Juliana off. Before Juliana is completely killed, Kyung doesn't forget to fulfill the role of Gedrick and says goodbye to Juliana. Finally, there is the item selection. Since the sword that Juliana uses is legendary level, it will choose its own master. Everyone thinks that Hyun Sung will be the new owner of the sword because he is the one who finished Juliana. But when Hyun Sung touched the sword, there were several incidents. The sword doesn't accept Hyun Sung, and at the same time, Kyung's hand is controlled by some force to grasp the sword. Although he didn't intentionally fight for this sword with Hyun Sung, when he saw the benefits of the sword, Kyung thought again. Hyun Sung also doesn't blame Kyung for taking the sword. He also offers to teach Kyung how to use the sword. So Hyun Sung suggests that Kyung goes to the training area three times a day. The task was completed and they found the president, but the president passed away just a few days after being saved. Kyung suspected this was definitely a problem, so he investigated it and Kyung's first suspect was Sol Ho. In the meeting room, after everyone sends off the president, Sol Ho goes to talk to Kyung and blames the president's passing away on Kyung. However, Ki Young exposes Sol Ho's false face right there, making him angry. He is about to attack Ki Young when he is stopped by Juliana's sword. Ki Young asks Sol Ho to fill out a report form and send them to Ki Young and Sang Hee. Later, Ki Young asks Duk Go to take Hai An to her room, and he goes to meet Jahai to gather information that he asked Jahai to help with. Ki Young wants to create false evidence to destroy Sol Ho. Jahai anticipates it early on, so she prepares medicine for Kyung. After talking to Jihai, Kyung met Hyun waiting in the hallway. Hyun was scolded by Kyung because he told her to stay at the base and not follow Kyung, but she still followed Kyung here. After that, they returned together. On the way back, the weather is very nice, so Kyung decides to go for a walk with Hyun for a while. But while they are talking, they are suddenly attacked by a mysterious group of people. Despite having Juliana's sword to protect them, their enemies are very numerous so Kyung is in a passive situation. After a while of fighting the soldiers, the leader appears and attacks Kyung. Hyun used the shield to protect Kyung, but because of the difference in level, she couldn't stop the leader's attack, so Hyun used herself as a shield for Kyung. Although Kyung had tried to prevent Hyun from doing so, she still didn't give up until Hyun was almost destroyed. Hira appeared and rescued them. Kyung guesses that the person behind this is Sol Ho. The fire of revenge boils in Kyung's body, and since Sol Ho has cornered Kyung, Kyung will definitely not spare Sol Ho. Hyun's condition is critical, fortunately. When giving Hyun medicine, Kyung discovers that Hyun can still be saved. Because Sol Ho attacked the Hira-funded person in the middle of the city of Lindell, this was a challenge for Hira's power. Hira wanted to resolve Sol Ho by herself, so Kyung proposed Hira to pour out all this problem go to Cilia's Yamato Guild because they are closely related to Sol Ho. Kyung has returned to the Blue Guild to carry out his plan to destroy Sol Ho. Kyung tells Sangi that he investigated along and prepared a play he dedicated to Sol Ho that blames him for causing the president's pass away and accompanied by fake evidence Kyung prepared. Sang Hee, after hearing that Kyung said she had changed her attitude towards Sol Ho, Sol Ho tries to explain, but now his words are no longer valid for Sang Hee. Sang Hee asks Sol Ho about the force behind him, but he remains silent, seeing that Kyung gave him a hand. Kyung released evidence gathered from the Black Swan Guild about Sol Ho being affiliated with the Yamato Guild, and he is very close to their guild leader, Ido Sauda. 
In the face of Kiang's obvious evidence, Sol Ho has no way to defend himself, as now Sol Ho's excuses aren't accepted by Sang Hee. Sol Ho is furious because he is falsely accused by Kiang. He attacks Kiang, but before he can touch Kiang, he is slashed once by Sang Hee and drops one of his arms. Sang Hee also orders Sol Ho and others to be locked up in prison. After Sol Ho was locked up in prison, Kiang came to take revenge on him. Kiang tortured Sol Ho until he was completely destroyed. Hyun Sung is reveling memories of his past life when Hyun was still a great and very kind magician. However, Hyun took her own life for some reason, and in reality, Hyun Sung is feeling very regretful because just a few seconds late, he could lose Hyun a second time. In her previous life, Hyun bids farewell to the world and leaves only a letter sealed by magic with ancient characters. Hyun Sung suspects that the mask threatened Hyun through that letter. Not only that, in this life, Hyun is still noticed by the mask and attacked by them. And Kyung, who is Hyun's boyfriend, is also affected. Hyun Sung is struggling because he can't always be there to protect Hyun and Kyung. Hyun Sung suddenly remembers Hai Jin and wishes that Hai Jin was there to help Hyun Sung protect Kyung and Hyun because Hyun Sung can't trust anyone but Hai Jin right now. Ki Young went to Hyun's room to observe her situation. Hyun's situation was better. Everyone gathered in Hyun's room, and this time Hyun Sung also arrived. Hyun Sung looked very pathetic because he had to find and destroy all the assassins around their neighborhood. Hyun Sung also promises to be more careful later. Ki Young reassures Hyun Sung because Hyun and he are fine, and Hyun Sung doesn't need to worry too much about it. A few days later at the Blue Guild, Hyun Sung was appointed as the next takeover of the Blue Guild, which after Hyun Sung nominated Ki Young to take over in important positions. Ki Young enjoys the feeling of having so much power, but when he hears that Hyun Sung announces that every position is given to him, Ki Young begins to panic. Ki Young is excited to start repairing the Blue Guild. They will make the Blue Guild a whole new place. Hyung reformed the entire Blue Guild from system to human and turned it into a guild that everyone dreamed of joining. But behind that glory is the image of Kyung living in a huge mountain of work. The work coming constantly makes Kyung unable to rest because he takes on too many positions. At that time, the president, Hyun Sung, seems more relaxed. After settling his work, Kyung caught Hira and Hyun Sung discussing. But there was something wrong with Hyun Sung's expression. Hira invites the Blue Guild to attack the Yamato Guild together. More precisely, Hira wants to take Kyung to the gathering of the major guilds held in the Empire. Since the Blue Guild is a growing guild, so they are not invited. Hira comes to invite Kyung to accompany him. The main goal of the trip is still the Yamato Guild, however. Kira wants Kyung to be able to let go of his work to go out and relax a little bit. This is also what Hyun Sung worries about. If Kyung leaves, who will manage the affairs of the Blue Guild? For Kyung, this is the chance to escape the hell of his job in the Blue Guild, so Kyung agrees to go with Hira. In Benagor, they meet Hira's godfather, Victor Hart who would be their escort, because his stats are so strong, Kyung is trying to impress him, but Kyung is thwarted by Hyun. Then they meet Shaman, the guild master of the Night Sky Guild. Kyung was surprised that he couldn't see Mind's Eye with Shaman, but then Shaman allowed him to see her stats. Suddenly, Shaman cries and appoints Kyung. Hira stops Shaman's actions and warns Shaman not to cross the line. Shaman apologized for her actions because Shaman mistook Kyung for an old friend and she couldn't control her emotions. Shaman also apologized on behalf of Celia if they had done anything wrong to Hira. Before leaving, Shaman left Kyung a note. She invited Kyung to her place to talk. Although he didn't know if this was a trap or not, Kyung chose to go to Shaman's place to find out more. After Kyung arrives, Shaman shows Kyung her eyes, which carry the power to see the past and future, and Shaman takes Kyung back to his past. In a previous life, Kyung still survived the battle. He was saved and helped by Shaman because she saw Kyung's future. In the following days, Shaman takes care of Kyung and they live happily together. But one day, Kyung threatens his savior. 
Suddenly, Kyung's eyes become painful and Kyung returns to the present. Kyung has realized Shaman's purpose in approaching him. Kyung is calculating how he can take advantage of Shaman's talent. After some exchange, Kyung succeeds in establishing a contract with Yu No, and she will become Kyung's servant. As soon as Kyung is out the door, she meets with Ido Sauda, guildmaster of Yamato Guild. Ido is threatening the article Kyung made up to tarnish his reputation. Kyung realizes that has the same personality as him to ridicule others and make them angry, so in the face of Ido's provocations, Kyung doesn't care. Ido took advantage of Kyung's self-controlled sword to turn Kyung into a criminal in the eyes of others. However, Yuno rescues Kyung and warns him not to touch Kyung. Kyung asks Yuno to help him with a mission. Then he leaves with the investigation team to clarify the incident where he was wronged. A few days later, Kyung continued to live in prison. Jahai visited him, and she also asked about Kyung's upcoming plan. However, it was a plan to combine with Hiro, and it still had not been done yet. So Kyung didn't reveal it to Jahai. Kyung isn't worried about the time he gets out of prison because Hira has already arranged everything for him. Kyung is just worried that when he joins the party, he will get a lot of bad looks at him. Jinhai tells Kyung not to worry because she will help Kyung turn public opinion in his favor. Kyung further reminds Jinhai that Ido's reputation here is quite good. Jinhai asks the guard to bring out Kyung's sword, Juliana, but he refuses. After being threatened for a while, the guard announces that for safety, the sword will be confiscated until the party is over. Now, to make up for Kyung, they have sent Victor Hart as Kyung's personal bodyguard. They are working on a plan to make Kyung a victim and Ido a criminal in Kyung's case, and this plan will be implemented during the party. During the party, Kyung tricked Ido to establish a peace treaty with them, and most importantly take advantage of it when they shook hands to implement the plan. Kyung suddenly smiled. After that, Kyung's arm exploded, and everyone focused their attention on Ido. Kyung begins to enter his brilliant acting state. He defiles Ido's honor so that Ido doesn't have time to react. Then, Ira gives Ido a kick. However, he doesn't respond and accepts being beaten. Kyung realizes Ido was trying to victimize himself and he is taking advantage of Hira's anger. But luckily, Victor Hart arrives to stop Hira's actions. After that, Ido accepted to be investigated to prove that he didn't commit crimes. Kyung is negotiating with Basil to stop supporting Ido when a soldier arrives to inform him that Ido requested an interrogation and Kyung is arrested to carry out that interrogation. During the interrogation, Ido pointed out that Kyung manufactures psychedelic drugs and that is illegal, which has become a detrimental factor for Kyung. However, Kyung's lawyer pointed out that the psychedelic drug is also just a drug and it is completely legal. But Ido pointed out that in this psychedelic drug, they use hallucinogenic ingredients beyond the prescribed level. In addition, Kyung also has an accomplice who helps him distribute the drug, Juno. Later, Ido concludes that Kyung is the criminal. In addition, Ido concludes that the attack in Lindell was just a fight between two factions within the Blue Guild. And if this news spreads outside, Kyung's illegal drug sales organization will be investigated, so Kyung slanders Ido as the one behind the attack. Kyung's lawyer countered Ido's accusations as fake because he had no evidence that Sol Ho was related to the Yamato Guild. Ido used an electric chair to torture Ki Young and forced him to plead guilty. However, Ki Young was still determined not to plead guilty. Ki Young's attitude drives Ido crazy. He tortures Ki Young even harder. Ki Young is very pleased with the result. He is waiting to see Ido's miserable expression when he pays for what he has done. After some torture, the judge asked again, and Ki Young accepted the whole Vatican was heretical. Later, Kyung performs a show that turns psychedelic pills into holy water, while turning the tide by turning Ido into a believer in heresy. Kyung asked for a retrial in the holy court, and accused Ido of being a heretic who worshipped demons, daring to call holy water a hallucinogen. Cardinal Marlin also supported Kyung's ruling and demanded that Ido be dealt with immediately. Ido was furious at being trampled by everyone like that. 
He was about to attack Kyung when he was stopped by Kyung's solid defense. Now that Ito's judgment has begun, the first hurdle we face is to fight Pastor Helena. Ito easily dodges Helena's attacks to move through to the next one. The second stage was to fight the mage Yuno. He also easily escaped somehow. Finally, as their decisive gate, Hayan, despite using all four spells at once, Ito was still able to flexibly dodge Hayan's attacks. While Kyung is in danger from Ito's attacks, Juliana comes to Kyung's rescue in time. Hira also arrives and gives Ito a knockout. Having been punished with holy water, Kyung decides to eradicate Ito to avoid trouble later. Because Kyung made a major contribution to the eradication of heresy, Kyung was nominated to the post of honorary bishop, which was also the first time a foreigner had held the post. Kyung brought a lot of gifts and items back from the Blue Guild, just arrived where Kyung met a new person, Hai Jin, who is an effective arm for Hyun Sung in the future. Kyung is feeling jealous of Hai Jin because while he is doing another job, Hyun Sung finds a new assistant to take Kyung's place. Kyung asked Hai Jin about her feelings when she worked at the Blue Guild, and then Hai Jin told Kyung how much the president trusted him, which touched Kyung. Kyung is handing out gifts to everyone. Everyone has a part, including Hai Jin, but when it is Hyun Sung's turn, Kyung has finished the gift giving session. Hyun Sung is confused as to why Kyung did it. At the meal, Hyun Sung took the initiative to ask Kyung if it was because Hyun Sung had recruited members for his secretary position, but did not inform Kyung, so he was angry. Hyun Sung explained that the reason he hired Hai Jin was that he wanted Kyung to have his workload reduced. Kyung gave gifts to the children. After finishing Hyun Sung's misunderstanding, Kyung gave the gift that he prepared for Hyun Sung, and Hyun Sung was very touched by it. In the next section, we will explore the new journey of Blue Guild. Are you curious if they will face new challenges and difficulties? I am quite sure the next part will not disappoint you. To know how to see what the next part is, press the like and subscribe button and know right away.